Hey everyone, and welcome to Play Noggin. I'm Julian, your brains player too. And maybe the voice narrating your dreams? At Play Noggin, we're into video games and we're into science, so we'll take any opportunity to share with you all the cool things we discover in your favorite games. Today, we want to talk about dreams, and to do that, we're going to look at the incredible indie game and occasional nightmare fuel, The Dream Machine. Unlike a lot of other titles we've covered so far, The Dream Machine isn't a blockbuster most people are familiar with, so I'll catch you up. The story follows Victor Neff and his wife Alicia, newlyweds who are expecting a baby and who have just moved into a new apartment. On their first night, both Victor and Alicia have strange dreams, and it's soon revealed that something sinister is going on. Pretty soon, Victor is popping in and out of the dreams of his fellow tenants, and things start to get really weird. There's way too much in the dream machine to cover everything, so we're going to take a look at the aspects we found most interesting. First up, the composition and symbolism in dreams. There's no clear reason for why we dream, but scientists have theorized for some time now that dreams help us process information and emotions we encounter in our waking life. The thought is that our brains receive so many inputs while we're living our lives that it just can't process them all in the moment. Once asleep, the brain can relax and not have to worry about making so many new connections, and it sorts through everything it encountered that day. Think of it this way. When we're awake, our minds are like a teenager's bedroom. The bed's unmade, there are clothes on the floor, you can barely walk in there. When we're asleep, it's like a worried parent coming in to tidy up. Everything gets stored where it needs to go, so things can function as they should. Dreams are simply the evidence that our brains are working through all these inputs. This theory makes a lot of sense, especially when you consider that people who are actively learning new things are often dreaming more. Sometimes our dreams are abstract and filled with symbolism. Other times they're more direct, like if your greatest fear is being covered in corpses of yourself, you might simply dream about being crushed by copies of your own dead body. That probably wasn't a fear you actually had. Until just now. Thanks, dream machine! But the reason dreams can vary from the absurd to the terrifyingly real is because of how they're generated in the brain. Most dreams occur during REM, which stands for Rapid Eye Movement, not the alternative rock band. REM is the stage of sleep where your body and brain are incredibly active. Your heart rate and blood pressure are at near waking levels, your brain waves look almost the same as they do when you're awake, and your brain's oxygen consumption is often greater than during waking hours. Scientists studying dreamers and people who have lost the ability to dream have found that areas of the brain that process emotions, memory, and vision are all active when you're in REM sleep. So, you can generate images from a combination of emotions and visual memory. However, the area of your brain that makes logical sense of things, the prefrontal cortex, isn't as active as when you're awake. This may explain why we go with the flow in our dreams and only realize they were absurd after we wake up. Victor's dream that starts the game, of being stranded alone on a desert island, is significantly symbolic. He feels lost, adrift, having left behind the friends and job he knew, embarking on a new adventure with a new wife and a new baby on the way. He feels alone, and this manifests itself in his subconscious mind while he dreams. He also incorporates something small from his memory, the picture of an island hanging above his bed. Your brain might take other cues from your surroundings even while it's crafting your nightly head movies. That's because your brain is remarkable in its ability to incorporate outside stimuli into your dreams. When Victor is stranded on the desert island, he finds an alarm clock buried in the sand. When it begins ringing, for a moment he's confused, because why would there be a ringing alarm clock on a deserted island? Then he wakes up to find he had incorporated his real ringing alarm clock into the dream. How many of us have experienced that? And yet no one accepts it as an excuse for being late. And more than just sounds can crawl into your head while we sleep. Researchers have found that touch, sight, and smell can also influence our dreams. In a 1993 study, participants wore cuffs on their legs and went to sleep. Once the participants were fully in REM sleep, the researchers inflated the cuffs, which put pressure on the participants' legs. Everyone was then woken up and asked if they were aware of the pressure. Several of them were, reporting tingling in the area, and some even found elaborate ways of incorporating the sensation into the dream, such as suddenly finding that particular leg paralyzed. So, the outside world can have an effect on you while you're dreaming, but can your dreams affect the outside world? One of the major questions asked by the dream machine is whether or not our dreams can harm us. The idea of dying in a dream leading to death in real life is pretty scary, and in popular culture we like to include it as a plot device because it seems plausible and cool. From The Matrix to A Nightmare on Elm Street, Hollywood seems convinced our brains are just waiting for us to fall asleep so they can kill us. The truth of the matter is, your brain probably can't hurt you while you sleep, unless you're a sleepwalker. Okay, actually, as it turns out, this is something that's really hard to study, since if someone were to die as a result of a dream, we wouldn't have any way of knowing that was the reason. Try not to have nightmares about that. 
The Dream Machine features a wealth of fascinating ideas about dreams, but my favorite thing about the entire game is that you have to solve logic-based puzzles in an inherently illogical world. If you're into point-and-click puzzles or indie games with weird art styles, I highly recommend you check it out. Thanks for watching Play Noggin. As usual, if you liked what you saw, be sure to like and subscribe. Drop us a comment below with your suggestions of what games you'd like us to cover, and take a look at some of our other videos right here. And don't forget to keep on playing.